neighborhood. Um, I'm representing District 3 in the City Plan and Zoning Commission. I serve as Vice Chair. My purpose tonight is to state pro the process in terms of zoning of where we are here. Well, no, I'm talking about my, my viewpoint. No, neither is here for the real process. I'm going to tell them my story because this is my neighborhood and they know where I live. So I'm going to say what I want to say. <laughs> so I want to tell you all what I've known here um, and what we are, what we've heard, no problem, dog, what we've heard um, with this development. About a week and a half ago, um, I've heard about a day before the rest of, rest of the citizens heard about. Um, a potential closing of the golf club of Dallas and changing it into um, a residential uh, establishment where there are villa type housing um, that has some type of density to create four or five hundred units here. At that time, and leave me correct me if, if I'm wrong, please feel free to do so. I specifically called the uh, city of Dallas uh, to ask. Um, how to get the zoning, what exactly is the zoning here uh, with this golf course. And this zoning is currently under R75. And what R75 stands for is that these are residential, single-family lots that have a minimum of 7,500 square foot lots. What does that mean? That means that if someone wants to create something that's smaller or denser, like 3,800 square feet, which I've heard, um, they would have to go into planning and zoning the office to file an application. Now, I haven't heard anything until this today um, where I met Mr. Alphine before this meeting. Um, I've never met him before. But if this property is sold, if he owns, if he owns this property and wants to change it to a down zone deal, they, he has to submit it to the city of Dallas. Right. Once that happens, the city of Dallas is assigned a planner um, to, to have a professional um, opinion of it. But also, most important, which is germane to us, is that they have to publicize it to people in the community uh, within 200 feet of the property boundaries, which has three neighborhood associations that are represented today. Once that happens, it has to go through the City Plan Commission, which I sit on, and me, as Vice Chair, will tell you now, I am not going to support a down zoning from R75. I said that because, one, I said that to Mr. Alphines earlier today. And two, I want to say that because it's inconsistent with what the other houses are in the around, surrounding area. And so, also, also, but what I'm, what I also want to say is that doesn't mean I, I want to restore the golf club, or does that mean if they want to zone this to where they can make million dollar houses, it's possible. I'm going to be quite honest with you. If, if it's open to doing that, I'll be open to hearing that. But what I'm not open to doing is approving down zoning to create a dense or a lower uh, property value. Yes. yes. It was very important for me to tell you that because one, living in this community, I understand 100% why we shouldn't trust city government. <laughs> oh, Lord. But, but at the same time, I'm going to be a part of the solution too. And so it's my job when Councilman Thomas uh, appointed me City Plan Commission to not only represent the city, uh, District 3, but also try my best to educate and inform in terms of city planning and zoning. And so, one thing that hasn't done historically, specifically for African Americans in Dallas, is transparency. And I want to help debunk that and be more transparent. With that being said, 
Because I have to leave, I have to teach a class, I have my business cards at the table. Please feel free to grab a business card. I'll also keep a stack here. And this is my city of Dallas planning and zoning card. Email me anytime. Because if you send an email, if there's a case assigned to this, if it goes to zoning and you oppose it, if you email this to me, I will email this directly to the other commissioners. All right, my brother. There you go. Y'all snagging cards already. And so I will pass this on. But I'm saying again, this hasn't even gone to zoning. Therefore, I haven't even seen the case. I don't even think there are official plans that have been public. So I just wanted to let you all know that. Um, most of y'all know my personal information, sell them, so y'all can call me anytime. Um, but, again, I know that there's a process that could be frustrating, but this process could also be helpful, and I want to be able to be a vehicle to be for the community with this process. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Houston. Uh, I have my colleague here, uh, Council Member Tanilla Atkins from District 8. I'm going to give him one minute, one minute, because we have a lot of people who are here, and a lot of people who are waiting outside. So I'm going to give him one minute to go ahead and make remarks and want to acknowledge him being here. So, Council Member Atkins, come on up, District 8. Very simple. Let's get honor to God and bless to be here. This is your community. You make that decision. Give you 45 seconds back. Appreciate that, Councilor Atkins. So, now we're going to follow the agenda as, as it reads the process. Uh, Matt began to talk about the process from his point of view as a commissioner. But what I have tonight, we have our assistant director for uh, sustainability, Neva Dean was going to talk about the process from the time the application is submitted to the process that follows. So at this time, we're going to need to come over to the city of Dallas. Thank you. So thank you all for coming out. This is a great turnout. We usually don't get this many people out for zoning cases, and this one isn't even filed, so this is great. Um, the very first process, or step in the process, would be somebody making an application. So the owner would give permission to somebody to make an application to our department, pay a fee, and make a request to rezone. So as Commissioner Houston said, the zoning here is R75. So if somebody wanted to just come in and plat it in R75 lots and build single family, they could just go get a building permit, go, just go plat first, get a building permit and be done. But if somebody wants to do anything else, smaller lots, apartments, retail, anything like that, they would have to come and go through the process to rezone the case. So the very first thing, an application would come in, we would take it, make sure it was complete, and give them zoning signs. So you may have seen white and red rezoning signs in your neighborhood before. So that's gonna be your first indication that all around the property, they'll have to put at least five signs saying they're gonna do rezoning. So the moment you see those signs up, you know they've made an application. The second thing that will happen is some of you individually or your neighborhood associations may be on our early notification list. If you're on our early notification list, about a week after we get an application, we send out an email to blast to everybody indicating that there's a zoning case. So if you're on our early notice list, that'll be the second thing. Then staff looks at it, makes an evaluation, works with the developer, indicates whether we can support it or not. Staff is independent from council and the plan commission. We look at it on a land use to plan commission. Next up would be plan commission. You would get a notice if you're within, this is a large area, so it's probably 500 feet. I know Commissioner Houston indicated 200 feet. It'd probably be 500 feet around this area. We get a individual property owner notice and a reply form so you'll get a colored reply form it's either blue or green i can't remember which color comes first green green comes first so that's the first thing you'll get a notice all the property owners and then you can indicate whether you support or oppose this request 
We'll go to have a public hearing at Plan Commission. They make a recommendation to council they're not the final decision unless the decision at Camp Plan Commission is denial and the applicant doesn't appeal. If the if Plan Commission recommends denial and the applicant does not appeal, then the case is finished. And if it's denied straight out, there's a two year waiting period. If it's denied without prejudice, then they can come in the next day and make a new application. If Plan Commission denies it, the applicant has an opportunity to appeal to City Council, at which time it would take a three-quarter vote at Council, which is 12 Council members, um, to approve the case. So if you can't get 12 votes, yes, then you would um, not get your case approved. If it's approved at Plan Commission, then it automatically goes to Council, and it is just a simple majority to approve it at Council. The importance of the reply forms are important at council for a reason. One is to let the council know what your thoughts and concerns are. But two, if it gets to council, if there are 20% of the land in opposition, so you take the land, if the owners of that 20% are in opposition, it'll require a three-quarter vote as well. So there's two triggers to the three-quarter vote. CPC recommending denial, or 20% of the land within 200 feet saying they're opposed to it, if it gets to council. And then if it gets to council, there'll be another public hearing and everybody can come and speak. And so those are, that's the process, start to finish. Question, no, sir. Repeat the question so we can hear it, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the question is, can the public hearing happen in the neighborhood versus at city council? Um, we have had instances where we might have had one public hearing in a different facility, but it was for the entire hearing, not one particular case. So we wouldn't do it for one case. You had a question? about what's going on today and how long it'll be going on and then also that it'll be happening happening again Tuesday. Okay. Okay, okay. Now, now what's your name? My name is Jessica Mason and I am with the Emergency Preparedness Department at the Council of Government and we're here working this donation site here at Thurgood Marshall Rec Center on behalf of the City of Dallas. So there's a call out for donations as you can see 
people from the city of Dallas have responded very well, not only in terms of goods, but also in terms of volunteer service. We even had this van come all the way from Tennessee with wow. items for our evacuees. So what we're doing is we're collecting here until 5 o'clock this evening, and then we'll start up again on Tuesday from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., and we will accept donations. We're looking for socks, underwear, toiletries, lots of baby stuff. So anything like that that you can donate would be more than appreciated. And you can also volunteer. If you want to get in touch with Volunteer Now, they'll um, take you into the system, and you'll be able to sign up to come volunteer here. Thank you so much. No, thank you. And, and the, thank you to the city of Dallas. All right. Dallas. Okay, and I know you, you're a little hot and sweaty out here, but <laughs> just a little appreciate bit. you. Yeah, we're happy to help. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.